Good morning and welcome to Inside Clinic Lectures. I welcome you to a, sm a small video on complications of hypermetropia. There are basically four main complications of hypermetropia if it is left untreated. The first one is recurrent styes, blepharitis and calasia. This is basically because when we do not correct a patient who has hypermetropia, he will have lots of eye strain and because of that eye strain, he will probably be rubbing his eye. Now because he keeps on rubbing his eye, it leads to all sort of problems in the lids, whether it is sty or it is blepharitis or it is calasion. Okay, so this basically happens. Why? Because the patient is having fatigue and tiredness and because of which he keeps on rubbing his eyes so it's because of that that he develops his recurrent styes blepharitis and various types of lid problems now the second important uh, complication of hypermetropia which is not corrected is eso deviation this eso deviation is also called accommodative convergent squint okay so let me explain uh, to you as to why this happens as we have already known seen in the previous video certain hypermetropia the image is actually being formed behind the eyeball and in order to bring this image back onto the retina the patient is constantly accommodating okay he's trying to make this lens more uh, convex so that the image actually falls back on the retina all right so he is putting a constant amount of accommodation and constant amount of accommodative effort now we know that accommodation does not happen just like that along with accommodation we get three main things you know it is a complex it's a reflex along with accommodation we also get two more things that is one is meiosis that is the constriction of pupil and one more thing that we get is the convergence okay so this is like a like three things which are uh, happening together okay it's a synkinetic uh, response which happens so we have accommodation and along with accommodation we get meiosis and we get a convergence also so in a hypermetrope which is not corrected he will be constantly accommodating and because of that constant accommodation he will also develop convergence and because of convergence his eyes will be moving inwards okay and this inward movement of eye is called eso deviation so the type of accommod uh, the type of squint which is common in hypermetrope is accommodative convergent squint okay and this type of squint usually gets resolved when the patient uh, when we give them glasses all right yeah coming to the third type of complication so what else can develop in patients when we don't give them refractive error correction very easy they can develop something which is called amblyopia okay so i will be doing a video on amblyopia also there are three types of amblyopia which can develop in these people and uh, the first type is they can develop something which is called an isometropic amblyopia so this is nothing but whenever a patient has unilateral amblyopia, unilateral hypermetropia that means one eye is normal and the other eye is highly hypermetropic so obviously this eye patient will not be using much and he will develop amblyopia so such an amblyopia because of unilateral refractive error is called an isometropic amblyopia so this is the first type of amblyopia that these people can get okay second as i already told you that they are more prone to getting something called, uh, called accommodative convergent squint and the amblyopia which develops because of the presence of squint is called strabismic amblyopia right so these people can also get strabismic amblyopia right and what else what about hypermetropia if it is present in both the eyes yes then also they can get amblyopia if bilateral high hypermetropia is present then they can develop amblyopia in both of these eyes okay so such an amblyopia is called amitropic amblyopia right 
so these are the three possibilities of amblyopia that these people can develop uncorrected hypermetropes coming to the fourth complication that these people can develop is development of a primary narrow angle glaucoma so what is this primary narrow angle glaucoma now we already know that in hypermetro the eye is actually smaller the axial length of the eye is actually smaller even the cornea is smaller if everything is proportionately smaller compared to the normal person so as the person is going to age what will happen to the lens the lens will definitely be increasing in size but the eyeball does not increase much in size so because of the progressive increase in the size of the lens with age the anterior chamber will become more shallow in these people now because the anterior chamber will become more shallow the iris will be pushed more forward right so now as the iris is being pushed more forward what is happening to the angle the angle is becoming more and more narrower and narrower and that is the reason that these people develop what is called narrow angle glaucoma so always you should remember whenever a case of hypermetrope is coming to the opd for general examination make sure that we check their angles okay the angles should not be too narrow and this is very important before we give them any sort of mitriatics because they can land up into an attack of angle closure okay so that's all to summarize there are four major complications which can happen if we do not treat hypermetropia these are recurrent styes blepharitis calaisons like lid problems accommodative convergent squint or it could be amblyopia or it could be a primary narrow angle glaucoma if you can think of more complications do mention them in the comment section thank you